All right, so in this video, we'll do a quick tutorial on how to get started using uh, system dynamics models, uh, specifically stock and flow diagrams uh, in simulation in Insight Maker. So if you go to insightmaker.com in a web browser, any web browser you like, and then create a free account, then you should be able to get access to the basic Insight Maker interface here, um, in which case, um, you can then click when you uh, create a new insight and when after you create a new insight then you it gives you sort of its own tutorial here which is actually very useful to go through on your own but uh, we'll just click this to clear it out so we get that blank canvas all right so uh, I want to be able to add a stock so I go to add primitive add stock that puts this stock right here in the middle so from here I can uh, double click on that and give it a name. I now would like to add flows to this. Well the way you do that in Insight Maker is flows do not show up in this uh, menu. They have their own special thing here. So I select flows transitions and then I click on a stock and then drag away from that stock and then let go either after I've connected it to another stock or if I'm just in the empty canvas. Now that will create a, a flow going away from the stock. To get it going into the stock, I click this reverse connection and then that puts it the other way. And it's automatically named flow. So I can double click on that and name it something else like births. Now to create my outflow, I do the same thing. I click on the middle here, drag it out. And that creates my outflow and I'll call it deaths. And then now I need to put my causal links in. So here it gets a little different. So I click on links and then I, just like I'm creating a flow, I drag from uh, the origin to the destination. And it's hard to see, but it created a link and it goes right inside this flow. So we would like to make it like an arc. So what I'm going to do is I hold down shift and I click once and that puts a little handle right on that, uh, that link. And then I can grab that handle and drag it up and it gives me an arc. So I can do the same thing. So links, grab bacteria to deaths, hit shift, click once, and then un, you know, I've, I've let go of shift now, that's an important, and then I go and I grab that and drag it up. So this looks like my full stock and flow, but I might wanna say add in some parameters. So I'm going to add a variable and it puts it in a circle by default here. Um, you find if you right click, you can actually change um, different aspects of how this thing is imaged, but um, we're just gonna leave it as a circle here. So I'll make this average time until reproduction and maybe make it a little bigger and then I'll create another one. Average lifetime. And then I need to create those links. So I'm going to make this a little bigger again. So again, I you notice it's got the little link handle here. So I, I can just grab that, drag it up to there. And I can grab this one, drag it up to there. And in this case, I'm OK with them being straight lines. And so I don't we'll, um, put a little handle and make them curved. All right, so now I just need to deal with the equations here. So there's a bunch of different ways I can do that. <clears throat> Notice there's this panel out here. It might still be open for you. You can use this thing to toggle the panel on and off. If I click on any element, I then get all sorts of interesting info about that element um, just by going uh, into this panel here. And so like if I click on this parameter, it says value slash equation equals zero. Well, I can change this. I can say, well, I'm gonna average time until reproduction. I'm gonna make it 0.75. Now, what I could have also done is notice there's an equal sign here when I mouse over this. If I click on that equal sign, it pops up a dialog and I can put 0.75. And notice it, by default, it goes to unitless. In the more advanced cases, we'll actually end up changing these so that you can put your own units in here so that Vincent, or so that Insight Maker can, uh, can keep track of whether your formulas are properly maintaining the correct units. But we're gonna keep things unitless for today. So average lifetime, I'll do the same thing. I'll put in a three. 
Then under uh, births, uh, I look for this equal, equal sign. So I can go here and I can, it's, it's now called flow rate, but instead I can click on this equal sign. And now when I go into this dialog by clicking on the equal sign, I can see everything I have access to by way of the causal links. So uh, I have access to bacteria. I also have access to average time until reproduction. The formula for this one is going to be this divided by that. And it has this restrict this flow for positive rates. I like to turn that off because that is extra logic that is not really well uh, depicted on the diagram. And so it'll give my reader, um, it, the reader who is looking at the diagram is going to be confused by that uh, because it won't appear anywhere on the diagram that there's this extra restriction here. So it's on by default, but we like to turn that off because if we depend on that, it very often means that we've maybe built something that can simulate, but our understanding of the logic of how the simulation works isn't quite right. Um, so it's nice for us to somehow build a simulation that that automatically has those restrictions built in um, to the diagram as opposed to sort of, uh, you know, depending on them artificially from here. So we're going to uncheck that so that this acts, you know, just like the formula. It doesn't have any hidden logic. Do the same thing for deaths. So I'm going to do bacteria divided by average lifetime for this one. Uncheck that. And then I have to set my initial condition on my stock. So I look for its equal sign. I'm going to add one bacteria initially. And this is automatically off the way I want it. So now I'm basically all done. So um, I can save one of these. Um, that's uh, not a bad idea to do. Um, I can then also simulate. And uh, then when I simulate, it shows me my sim here. Now, um, this default display, this is the default plot here. If I click on that and click configure, I can see what are you plotting? And it looks like it's plotting all three of these things. And if I actually look in the y-axis, I can see it says it actually has all three represented there. Now, I might only care about plotting one of those. Now, I can edit this plot, or I can just go ahead and say add display. And I'm going to say I'm going to create a bacteria display plot and I am going to plot the bacteria, and that's all I'm going to plot. And uh, then I can go down here and add settings here. And so I can then say, well, my time, this percent %u means it's going to use whatever unit our time is, and we'll have to get to that in a second. And, uh, but then on my y-axis, um, I say, well, I wanted to say bacteria on the y-axis, and I'm going to put units of bacteria in there. So that allows me to specify um, units to, um, to the person who's reading this. And uh, now uh, we'll learn more advanced ways to handle units later, but for now, just for the purposes of, of decorating the graph, that's one easy way to do it. And I can also then set min and max on my axes. Um, I can adjust whether I want a legend or not. So maybe since I'm only plotting one thing, um, I, um, you know, I, I'll set it to automatic, but I can even set it to none if I want to get rid of that. So, um, so right now I see there's a legend up here and it says the green line is bacteria. Um, so that's not really adding a lot of info. So I'm going to hit configure and maybe turn off that legend. So I'll say legend none. And then that gives me this plot right here. And uh, if I were to hit play, I could see this thing move along, and um, or I can actually go back and see the way it looked at previous times. And if I'm doing my sim, I can even do like full speed, and so if I hit play, it's kind of immediate, or I can slow things down if you think that's useful, and it moves really slow. So we'll just do full speed, and then it's all done. Okay. So um, that is a plot. Now, to get data out of here, you could take a screen grab of this plot. Um, that is sort of one way that you could do this. Um, the other way is, is you could say, well, what if I just want the raw data out? Well, I can click Add Display and then select Table. And then so here, I can call this, say, Bacteria Table. I can say I want to grab bacteria for that. And then none of the rest of these chart settings matter because it's not actually going to produce a chart. So if I then now click Apply, Bacteria Table shows me all of these things. And I can then click Download. And it will actually give me this CSV file that I can open up in Excel and plot however I want. 
All right, now notice my time in this table steps in times of one. I probably want it to step in uh, smaller DTs than that. So where do I edit that in Insight Maker? Well, if I go to the settings up here, I find my start, my simulation end, I find the units here, so I'll change them to seconds, and I find the time step, and so I'll change that to 0.01. So now, if I go in and simulate, then now I see that, if I were to go to, say, this table, that the data that are generated are generated in the right time step, and I get a growth curve that makes maybe more sense to me. So if I download that, say bacteria CSV, and I'll maybe put it in this sample models folder over here, and if I were to then go into Microsoft Excel and open that thing up, so I'll hit open, and then open that bacteria CSV file, then it shows me all the same data that I see here. And so then I then could maybe select these two columns, go to insert, go to say recommended charts, and then open this scattered chart. And I could go in here and I could add a chart element, say an axis title primary horizontal, and this will say time seconds and then add a chart for primary vertical. I can say this is in bacteria, um, in units of, say, bacters, if I'd like that. And I could call this uh, you know, population growth of bacteria. And then I have a nice plot that I could then import into another document. And that plot should match, roughly, the plot that I get here. Time seconds, bacteria, in this case I used units bacteria. And those are the basics of how to use Insight Maker to simulate a basic stock and flow. Um, the, uh, looking at this, uh, the only other thing I want to add is notice that now these flows have double arrows. One going in that's sort of an unfilled arrow and one going out that's a filled arrow. That's just because I unchecked this restrict uh, this flow to positive rates. Um, so this flow, if I were to check that, it only would move in this direction. Now that it's going this way, it's possible to have negative flows. So in theory, you could actually have a flow going in even though it's drawn out. So the way you read this is that the unfilled one is in the negative direction and the filled one is in the positive direction. Um, so this is going into the bacteria and this is going out of the bacteria. Uh, and then if I wanted to save this diagram into a report, um, the easiest thing to do is probably to do a screen grab. Now there are, under Share, ways to export this diagram as an SVG file, but some people have trouble working with SVGs in their documents, in which case it's just easier to do a screen grab, but you can always try that. The other thing that I want to show you before uh, we, we leave here is in this Download Insight Maker file, if I select that, that's how I get a .insight maker file that I can actually upload into Canvas with my assignments. So that's the way I can export files, and then if I wanted to reopen somebody else's Insight Maker file, then there's actually ways to import from an Insight Maker file that you have on your home computer. You can upload it that way and then uh, bring it right into your model. And then also notice that there's a equ complete equation list. And so if you ever want to get a quick summary of all of your equations, you can go into that share, export, complete equation list, and there are all your equations. All right, I hope that's been helpful.